So one last example of applying Gauss's law, and, and that's the case of planar symmetry. Um, so let's imagine I have a slab that's filled with charge. Okay. And to really have planar symmetry in the way I need to do the Gauss's law calculation, this has to be a big slab. So in fact, if I, uh, let's draw my axes here. So let's call z hat up. We'll have uh, x hat to the right, y hat into the page. Uh, in the Let's imagine for this slab, we're going to say that it's infinite in the x and the y direction. So it has no variation, um, which means the slab extends off to infinity um, in the x and the y direction. Okay, And it has finite extent in the z direction. Uh, let's say it has a thickness of, of a. Okay. Um, now, again, there's no real object that has is a slab that goes off to infinity, but you can imagine a finite size slab of charge um, where if you stand close enough to that slab, it looks very big to you, and you can treat it as approximately infinite. So this calculation would apply when you're very close to the slab of charge, okay, standing very close compared to the length of a side. Okay, so that's this dimension we'll call B. So if I am, you know, let's say Z is in this direction, I'm standing at a position Z. Um, if Z over B is very small, then I can use this approach where I treat it as an infinite object and do it an approximate calculation. Okay. All right, so we want to use Gauss's law to calculate the electric field in this case, and we have the symmetry required in order to do our trick of turning E dot dA into E dot N hat times A by choosing the right surface where E dot N is constant on the surface. Now, we even you know, before we knew Gauss's law, we knew how to predict the field for this object. Okay, um, by symmetry, because the variation in this object is only in the z direction. Um, if you imagine a field line that starts on charges inside this uh, slab of charge and tries to go off to infinity, um, for a point charge, of course, what happens is the field lines try to spread out in space. Uh, and each little bit of this slab the, the, is producing an electric field that's trying to spread out. But of course, neighboring bits of the slab are spreading out and, and overlapping. So if I pick, you know, a bit here and a bit here, you know, they have field lines that go up. They have field lines that are trying to go left and right. But what happens is you get cancellation of field lines going left and right, and all that all that remains are field lines that go straight up and down. Okay. <clears throat> so when you have planar symmetry. Uh, perfect planar symmetry in the sense that you have these infinite slabs, the only direction the field line can go is straight up along the z-axis in this case. And there's no way for field lines to spread out um, at all in this case. They just go straight. So the only way to change the electric field strength uh, is to have charges, uh, to be standing on charges. Okay. So if I'm out here um, above the this slab of charge, um, there's no charge density up here, and so basically field lines that are there will just keep going straight up. They will not separate, and uh, the distance between the field lines will never change. Therefore, the field is constant up here. So we know that the solution up here is a constant field, and also below. Okay. Now, if you're inside the charge, you can create new field lines. Now, the field lines still have to point straight up and down by symmetry, but you can have new field lines kind of popping out of nothing, okay, because there's charge around. So if this is the center of the slab, it turns out by symmetry, I have to argue in the very center of the slab, the electric field is zero because I'm going to reverse directions across that center. Okay? But as I move up, I start to pick up field lines that kind of pop out of nothing. Okay? And then once they're, um, so the electric field strength will increase as I go away from the, um, from the center as new field lines pop up. Uh, but once I'm in the vacuum region above, they, the number of field lines stays the same and they just go off to infinity straight up and the field uh, doesn't change value. Okay? All right, so we know we're going to have constant um, electric field above and below the slab, but in the slab we might have a variation that will be with the z coordinate only. Um, all right, so we know the electric field in this case is going to be E, z, with possibly a z variation in the z hat direction. Okay. 
now. Um, so we need to pick a surface that lets us do this. So the surface is going to have the normal uh, has to be z hat, okay? Um, and so it's going to be planar surfaces, okay? But we have to close the surface, so we, we create what's called a pillbox. So if we have, um, so here's our slab of charge here, okay, look from the side. What we'll do, here, let me redraw it like this. Not a very good job drawing it, but there you go. What I'll do is I'll pick an uh, 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 imaginary surface that has the same um, shape as the top and bottom of the plate, but I might take a circle, for example. So take a circle here that has normal vector in the z direction. I should change colors. Um, okay, so I'll take a circle that has normal vector in the, the z direction. And then I can do the same thing at the bottom of the surface. Let's imagine we, we go down here at the very bottom. And then I can connect it with, um, you know, a cylinder between those two. Okay, now because the electric field only goes in the z direction, and although I haven't drawn it very well, the surface of this cylinder um, lies along the z direction. So the normal is in the x or the y direction. So the sides of the cylinder or pillbox, there's no flux through the side. Okay, all that matters is the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom contribute to the, the, the net flux through that surface. Okay, so for a, a surface like this, I can write down, let me go up here, okay, so here my um, e dot n times a will really be, um, let me number surfaces before I do this, let me call um, this one, the top one surface 1 and the bottom one surface 2. Okay, so what I'll find is that I'll have E um, at surface 1 in the z direction times the area of surface 1. Um, and if I imagine the electric field, uh, the charge is positive, so the field points up above the surface and down below the surface. I'm going to add to it an additional outgoing flux that's E at surface 2, uh, z component, times the area of surface 2. Okay, I'll try to squeeze in a 2 here. Okay, not very well done. But anyway, now the way I've drawn it, the areas are the same. So this is going to be E uh, area times E1 plus E2. And if I pick the surface so that they're at the same location above and below the surface, and in fact, I don't have to make it the exact same location except when I'm inside the charge distribution, it turns out. But if I imagine this surface has uh, this cylinder, has equal height above and below the center of the slab, then E1 has to equal E2, but it's you know it's in the opposite direction, but same magnitude. So this becomes 2 times the electric field at that location, Z, times A. Okay? All right, so I, the point here is we're just using the tops of our pillbox um, to calculate the flux because the sides don't contribute to the flux. All right, so that was one, one configuration we could use. We can also use a different configuration um, for the slab. So if I draw my slab just from the side here, I know that at the center of the slab, by symmetry, the electric field at that location, at say let's call it z equals zero, has to be zero, okay? So another way that I can do this calculation, and this is the way I'll choose to finish the calculation, is to choose a pillbox that has one side that sits at z equals zero and the other side that sits at some location z. Okay, and in this case, because I know there's no flux through the bottom because the field is zero there, I can, sh I can write that integral of e dot dA um, for this box here is just going to be the electric field at the location z, okay, which is in the z direction, times the area of the top, okay, surface. Okay, which I'm free to choose. Again, I'm, I'm specifying this box. I can make it whatever. I, I can make it not a cylinder. I, all, all that matters is I have a, a flat surface with a normal that points in the z direction, um, and I know the area of it. Okay. All right. So now I have um, my, in this case, so let's, go, let's go and do this calculation. So I'm going to use this pillbox as I've drawn it here um, with one side on the z equal to zero um, location on the axis, and I've got now my left-hand side of Gauss's law. 
Okay, so if I choose z bigger than a over 2 in this case, because I'm going to say z equal to 0 is right at the center, has a thickness a, this is going to be outside. And here, it's again, q enclosed is going to be constant, and it's going to be equal to the total charge um, enclosed uh, by my pillbox. Well, let me, let me be careful here, okay, because what I mean by total charge depends on how I pick my pillbox. But let me just say that q enclosed is constant in this case, because um, no matter how high, I'm always picking my bottom uh, of my pillbox at z equal to 0, and I'm moving the top to various locations z, and no matter how high I move it, assuming z is bigger than a over 2, the q enclosed does not change. Okay, so this is constant. All right, and so um, let's calculate that Q enclosed. So the Q enclosed um, is going to be the integral um, of the volume of rho, and here I'm picking it to be a constant, so it's really just going to be rho times the volume, okay, of charge. Now, so here I have to be careful what I what I mean by volume. It's not the volume of my pillbox in this case. It's the volume where I have a finite charge density. So that's that's going to be the volume. Um, uh, that's just let me maybe draw it here uh, in red. Okay. So it's this volume here that I mean. Okay. And that volume is not changing as I move the z the top surface up. I, I just that's how much you know charge is inside my box. Okay, so that volume will be um, the area of my pillbox times the height where I have charge, which is going to be A over 2, okay, times rho naught. Okay, so that's the Q enclosed for the case of Z bigger than A over 2. Okay, so now my um, left-hand side is going to be E at the location Z. Okay, EZ of Z times the area of the top of the pillbox, and that's going to equal A times little a over 2, rho naught over epsilon naught. Okay, and so these cancel, and what I find is in fact a, a constant electric field. It doesn't vary with Z. I get that the electric field um, is just, in this case, um, A times rho naught over 2 epsilon naught. Okay. Now this looks familiar, hopefully. Um, if you remember when we uh, calculated the field of a uh, of a plate, and then we took the limit where the plate is infinitely big, um, we got something that looked a lot like this. Let me switch to the other page here. So in that case, if we took a, an infinite sheet and made it uh, infinitely thin, we found that the electric field uh, goes like in the z direction sigma over 2 epsilon naught okay where sigma is the uh, charge per unit area okay and this quantity rho naught times a is in fact the same as the charge the effective charge per unit area of this slab okay so the question is um, uh, this is the charge per unit volume, rho naught. If I multiply it by the thickness, this turns into a charge per unit area, and this is the same as the effective thickness, as if I were to uh, as effective charge density. So if I were to take this slab and squash it down to a flat pancake, the amount of charge that would be in that surface would be this number, which is rho naught times a. So it's the same. Um, so what we can do is write. The electric field is this effective charge density, um, surface charge density over two epsilon naught. Okay, and this is true above and below. I could, you know, I did the calculation assuming I was going above with my pillbox, but by symmetry, I know it's the same answer if I flip it over and put the pillbox below. It just the field goes in the other direction; it goes down. Okay. All right. So now for. Um, okay, let me be clear. This is z bigger than a over two. So now if I consider z less than a over 2, so now I'm looking at points inside the slab, I know that the field can vary with distance because there's charge there, and I can create new field lines. Okay, Again, the field lines still go straight up and down. They can't spread out, so that's not why the field changes. But um, I have charge there, so new field lines will pop into existence as I move in space effectively. OK. 
Okay. So in that case, my, my pillbox, let me redraw it just so I'm clear. So let me make the slab a little bigger. Here's the center of the slab. And my pillbox that I'm imagining will maybe be this big. Okay. And so this distance here, I'm going to call Z. Um, and now the charge enclosed by my pillbox is going to vary as I move the pillbox, move this surface up and down. Okay, the top surface. Um, my, let me uh, switch to the next page to finish here. Um, my calculation still looks the same though. I have on, uh, only fl uh, flux through the top surface. It'll be the E at that location, Z times the area of my pillbox, okay? And now the charge enclosed is not going to be, um, it'll still be just volume times rho because it's uniform. I don't have to do an integral here. I just did rho naught times the volume of my box. And so that's going to be A times Z times uh, rho naught, okay? So now this cancels and um, what over epsilon naught, sorry. And so now I get that the electric field inside uh, increases linearly with C um, and has this form, okay? Now another way to write this, um, so we get dimensionality that looks consistent, is I can multiply and divide by, we get Z over A times A rho naught over epsilon naught, and this is the same as Z over A times sigma um, over epsilon naught, okay? Okay, and so um, just to double check, this is, our, this is now our field inside the object. This is for Z less than A over 2. Um, they should match at A over 2. The field should be continuous in, unless there's an uh, infinitely thin sheet of charge in the, in the system, which we'll talk about in class, but there's not that case here. So at Z equals A over 2, um, this solution becomes um, sigma over 2 epsilon naught as we find outside. So everything matches up. Okay. All right. I'll stop there.